quickly. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are very excited and honored to welcome Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito to the town of Auburn today. So if you could join me in a warm round of applause for her. Thank you. We are thrilled that you're here. Uh, I also want to introduce some of our other elected officials who are here today, and a couple of whom will be saying a few words. Uh, we have with us Representative Paul Frost. We also have uh, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Ken Holstrom, Vice Chair Doreen Goodrich, Select Person Denise Brotherton. From the Auburn Housing Authority, we have actually Chair Wayne Page sitting there, who's also with the school committee. And then on this side, we have the Auburn Housing Authority. Uh, uh, Director Lori Brennan is here, as well as members Roberta Briggs, Joyce Lamoureux, uh, and Alice Ray. And from the school committee, we have Chairman George Scobie. And we also have members Jesse Harrington and Gail Holloway. So I think I got everybody that's up there. So for those of you who are wondering why we're here today, uh, and I also want to please acknowledge all of our department and division heads and members of the fire department and police department. They just do an incredible job for the town of Auburn. We uh, are very thrilled because we applied for a community compact. So Lieutenant Governor Polito is here today to officially sign the compact, which is a mutual agreement entered into between municipalities and the state administration uh, to agree to so-called best practices that we will implement with the assistance of the state administration through various uh, departments. The Town of Auburn submitted our community compact application for three best practices. We were allowed three, and we submitted for all three, and I'm thrilled that we were approved for all three. Uh, the first one is in the category of housing. The town will develop a community supported housing plan that accounts for changing demographics, including young families, working workforce dynamics, and an aging population. The plan will identify and inventory our current housing stock, assess and analyze the need for additional housing unit, and create a strategy to address those needs. This will become part of our overall master plan that we undertook that process starting in January, and we have a couple of our master plan committee members sitting here on the front. In the category of job creation and retention, the town will develop an economic development plan which leverages local economic development, regional assets, encourages innovation and entrepreneurship, and demonstrates collaboration with educational institutions. The town of Auburn is seeking to develop a sustainable economic development plan that will enhance business retention activities here in town and lead to the facilitation of expansion and relocation of businesses. And again, that will also become part of our master plan. And the third best practice is in the area of early education, which is why we have the school committee here too. We're thrilled that they have joined us in this effort to identify best practices for the town. Uh, the school department will identify partnerships with private providers in the provision of high quality early education and out of school time services to leverage existing resources. Specifically, the Town of Auburn and the School Committee will be looking to work with public, private, and home-based child providers to ensure that children in the ages three to five uh, brackets will have a good start with programs in early childhood education so they'll be prepared and ready to go to kindergarten. So these are the items that we applied for that we're looking forward to working with the state with the resources that you bring to bear for us. And it's a great example of a state local partnership that the Baker Polito administration has really been committed to. I know you've worked on a lot of different local initiatives to try to strengthen and enhance the relationship with towns and we're grateful for that and this is one way to show that we're going to be involved in it. Uh, through this program, we will see some type of incentives, uh, whether that be financial or technical assistance, hopefully a combination of both, to help us achieve these goals, which will be done over an 18 to 24 month period. So we'd like to have a couple of our elected officials welcome you here and speak to, so I'd like to turn it over to Representative Paul Frost. Uh, thank you, Town Manager Julie. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to say on behalf of, of the town of Auburn and here in my own hometown uh, to, to welcome you and to, and, to, and to thank you for coming out here to do this, uh, this compact with the community. Um, I also want to give best wishes from our state senator, Michael Moore. Uh, he has to, he's actually at a, uh, a public hearing on a bill on recycling that he, he, had, uh, he had filed, he had sponsored, and he has to be attending and testifying at that public hearing today. Uh, but I just want to think on behalf of both of us, thank you very much. Uh, and we look forward to the further cooperation that we've already seen from the Baker Political Administration with our local cities and towns. They made that a priority. They have kept their word, uh, even through times when 
the, the, uh, they inherited a problem with the budget last year. Um, they didn't cut anything from our local cities and towns uh, because they know how important it is. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that, you know, Lieutenant Governor was once a selectman before she was a state representative, and Governor Charlie Baker was once a selectman. So they both understand what's happening at the local level, what, we, what, what you folks all go through, and how, and how better the state can be a partner in helping you provide services. Because one of the things why I always be strongly supportive of local aid is that local aid is the services, when well, local aid goes to the town services that most folks use. And when you think of public services that people use, people are relying on their town or city services more than state or federal. Uh, that'd be the, you know, this, you know, there are certain people who might need a little more of state or federal help, but generally speaking, your average citizen relies on town and city services. And I know Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito understand that, they see that, and that's why we're here today signing this uh, very important compact. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. And also to welcome you on behalf of the Board of Selectmen is Chairman Ken Holstrom. A warm welcome from the Town of Auburn to you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, this uh, contract we have in front of us today is just going to expand, enhance, and supplement the programs that our town administration has already put into place. It's gonna be a great thing for us. Uh, our town manager, Julie Jacobson, has uh, put together a great team, and most of the team is here today, and uh, we can't forget about our employees because they are the biggest part of the team that carry the ball here. And I think with the contract we have in front of us, uh, the town will benefit greatly, and we really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, we'd also like to have George Scobie, who's the chairman of the school committee, say a couple of welcoming remarks. Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, welcome. We thank you for supporting us in our efforts. Um, it's long been known that early childhood education is of the utmost importance for success at the higher levels. So as much as we support our students at the higher levels, we find that this is just a, a fantastic opportunity to make sure that everyone's getting a fair shake at the lower levels. And we think it's really gonna improve, not only in our community, but community, but throughout the state. So um, on behalf of Dr. Burnell and my fantastic board members um, would like to thank you and the governor for all the support. Much appreciated. Thank you. Lieutenant Governor, again, we're honored to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm just going to stand, so I'll stand right with you. With you. So good morning. I want to thank you very much for, for having us and to, to bring this uh, compact to Auburn. It was your choice. And to be in a room that I, I feel very comfortable in, I uh, feel at home in. I've spent many times here uh, as a former selectman convening meetings here about municipal officials, uh, the, the issues as a former state representative being here in this room. A lot of good things happen in this room. Uh, I want to thank both the, the school committee, the select board, the housing uh, board to come together today around the three best practices that you have chosen. And then to have so many here uh, physically in this room today, I'm very grateful to have your presence. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you to uh, those that come up and get up every day and come to work here in the community of Auburn. Uh, this is important work and you need to know that. And you are on the front lines. You you are very visible in the offices that you 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 serve in, and uh, you probably don't receive a whole lot of thanks every day for the work that you do because you are that front line. You hear sometimes frustrations, concerns, questions that people have, and you need to be able to sort of triage those issues and really help people get connected to what they need. So, just uh, Charlie and I are very grateful to the public servants at the local level that uh, work every day on all 351 cities and towns. Uh, we really appreciate your choice uh, of, of work and for choosing a great community like Auburn to work in takes a strong leadership team as well. Uh, Julie Jacobson, I call her a rock star among town managers here in the Commonwealth. Uh, you made a very good choice uh, five years ago uh, 
when attracting her from uh, the city of Worcester where she was an assistant to then a manager, Mike O'Brien. And I was thrilled to see a woman of her capability uh, decide that she would take on uh, the management position herself and come here to Auburn. And I'm sure in the five years that you have all worked together uh, with Julie, uh, you've, you've accomplished a lot of great things. Uh, but today is a sort of a, you know, an exhibit A to the work that you're doing and the recognition that success is never final. There is always more work to do, including in a community like Auburn that seems to, you know, have it all. And there's always more work to do. So just let me highlight a few things about how our administration is, is helping you continue to have success in your community. First, I want to just thank uh, Representative Frost and Senator Moore. Uh, they've been great advocates uh, for central Massachusetts, <clears throat> being my roots are here. I also am a strong advocate as your lieutenant governor uh, for central Massachusetts and frankly for a lot of the region, uh, regions and cities and towns that are outside of the Boston area, the eastern Massachusetts area and really trying hard to make sure that all 351 cities and towns have the opportunity to succeed. I want to thank the legislators because it was through them that we were able to fund a number of ways to better help communities. I think Representative Frost pointed out one early on in our administration, it was actually day 20, um, <laughs> something around that day that we realized we had a deficit for the, that current fiscal year. And we knew, both Charlie and I as former selectmen, that we, we would never ask the cities and towns to have to rebalance a budget mid-year. I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, you have, you have pre preparations, you count on the state aid, and you, you budgeted for that. So we knew we had to look elsewhere to be balanced that year's budget without asking for you to do more. And uh, we took that philosophy and, and certainly brought that forward in the subsequent budgets that we planned, including this year, we fulfilled our promise to you that 100% of the state revenue growth this year it's close to four and a half percent. That is the same revenue percentage of growth that you will see in your local aid in our budget. That's a, an increase in unrestricted aid and we added over 72 million to the chapter 70 line item account. So that's, that's just fulfilling our promise that you need the resources, you need predictability and certainty around those resources to do your job. Uh, are there any uh, highway folks, uh, road folks in the room? Okay, so obviously chapter 90, uh, very first day, released the 100 million from the, the years prior that was stuck, and then followed through in our commitment to continue to release early on in the year, you know, not later, early on, you know, the $200 million last year, again this year, uh, to you so that you can plan for road projects. Well, the contractors coming from a family of contractors understand you need to get in on that early cycle so that you can do the road work and the sidewalk work and all that stuff. Now, we, we get excited about things like this and it's because it's the bread and butter stuff that makes a community strong. It's what people notice when they're driving through a community and deciding, am I going to make Auburn my home? Are the roads maintained? Are the sidewalks passable? You know, is this a community that has strong leadership around making sure that schools are great, the neighborhoods are safe? I see our public safety folks in the room. And then there, that there are jobs and opportunities for families to be able to look at and earn a good income and maybe even have more opportunity to earn more for their families. I mean, those are the three basic ingredients for a strong community and you have all that represented here today. So the first point is that the resources need to flow between state government to you to be able to do your work. And the compact program is a, another tool to be able to help prepare communities for success takes leadership, but it also takes good governance and best practices. And in, in, in the best practices that you chose around economic development and planning, you know, sometimes uh, you've got so much to do every day in a community that it's hard to find the resources to plan and to create these master plans that are really uh, your vision for the future. And that's why the compact is a available to provide the consultant's money or to provide the technical assistance so that you can take these ideas that you have as a community and really put them in a plan so then you can work on implementing that plan. 
And what I love about the Compact program is that it allows your opportunity to come together like in your war room. I don't know where it is, but you have a room that you come to, right, with a table and you gather around and you talk and you say, you know, where has Auburn been? You know, what are the things that we've succeeded at? But what, what more importantly, what are some of the things that we really want to get to? What are these things that will really help Auburn, you know, create more of those jobs and opportunities for people? And you put together your ideas and it's now Put, put into writing in this compact, and we pay for it. We knew firsthand when we put this program together that it can't be an unfunded mandate. Those don't work. <laughs> we agree with you. So we wanted a, a voluntary program that you choose what you think you want for your community, not us telling you what's best for you, and we fund it. So that's the essence of this program, and it's really taken off. Uh, 351 cities and towns. We've had over 200 applications, and I'm proud to say that Auburn is the 141st community to sign a compact. I mean, what's great about this, this is hundreds of best practices underway in our Commonwealth, which I feel is uh, hugely impactful in preparing communities uh, for the future. The last point I want to make is that we have revenue sharing, we have best practices, but we also need to provide you tools to save money. And that's why uh, we prepared this municipal modernization bill. Uh, a year ago when we came into office, Charlie and I said, so what, what else are we going to do for our cities and towns? And we decided that, well, we don't know. We've got to ask them. What is it that you want more from your state government? How can we streamline? How can we better work together? How can we help you save money on the local level? And you responded to our question, 1,300 plus responses, you know, in the weeds kind of stuff. I mean, in the details on, you know, how do we better use revolving funds and stabilization funds and... Uh, how can we better uh, comply with some of these state uh, requirements that take a whole lot of time and, and resources from you to have to document certain things? Like, how do we peel back some of the layers of this onion? So 1,300 responses. We put them into a municipal modernization bill. It's had five hearings. And uh, it's now uh, at a point in time where you as local leaders need to engage your, your legislative friends and ask them to really focus on getting this bill passed. I mean, we feel streamlining, you know, getting rid of obsolete, outdated uh, regulations, and then just giving more control to you to control your destiny is important. I'll give you an example. One is the issue of liquor licenses. Now, you're talking about a master plan in economic development, and you may be at your, your limit for liquor licenses, but if you had control over that process, just think of how important that would be to a local developer if you, they knew that you, as a board of selectmen, could decide whether an additional license or two for a restaurant type of on-premises uh, lit license would be helpful to making a deal come together. That should be your decision. It shouldn't then have to go through another layer of decision making at the state level before it's known to that private partner that it can happen. So that's an example of just letting the locals decide what's best for you and giving you more tools to work with on a local level to get things done. So that's just a little snapshot of you know some of the ways that we're working together. I tell the governor all the time, I have the very best job in state government because I get to travel to uh, all places of our state and we have a great state but we have a big state in terms of the differences from the Berkshires to the Cape. Uh, every region is different. They're blessed with strengths. Let's help these communities play to those strengths and have more opportunity to succeed. So I, I want to thank you uh, Auburn for choosing to be part of the compact <laughs> and beginning uh, you know, the, the work that is needed to help you in these areas and by signing the compact, you get bonus points. You know, we want to incentivize good behavior. And uh, this is good behavior for sure. And you get bonus points when it comes to the statewide uh, grants like MassWorks, which is the infrastructure grant fund. And you have opportunities to apply for grants like um, an IT grant round that's available right now to only communities that have signed into the compact. That's a $2 million grant round. I see nodding heads. Can you think of a way that technology could solve one of your problems? I'm sure you can. And, uh, and issues like Complete Streets. We added $12.5 million to the Complete Streets program, a way to uh, make sure that you are 
having an accessible, walkable, uh, you know, neighborhoods in in your community to make it even more attractive for people and businesses uh, to move around. So, those are just a few examples. Uh, but it's fun. I love it, and I love coming uh, to the buildings where these decisions are being made every day. And it's just a real pleasure and an honor to be here with you to sign. So, thank you. Thank you. On a, on a signature. The other point, too, on the education piece, I thought this best practice was terrific. Uh, we added over $18 million to kindergarten expansion grants to get to communities that were not part of the, the grant um, program in the past. And what's great about studying this issue for Auburn is we want to make sure that when students are uh, reached during that three to five year period, that when they transition into the public schools, they have a strong uh, K through 12, the first grade to, to 12 program as well, so that they're not prepared and then the education level of quality dips down that it's a continuum and really sets them up for success. So this is a really good uh, pilot, if you will, and study that we will enjoy having with, with Auburn on that issue. So good for you. All right, so Ken, are you ready to sign? Yes, I am. Okay, let's do it. I bet Mary Ellen would like to have been here. I know. 141, that's your lucky number. <laughs> 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for coming and also Lieutenant Governor, I just want to have uh, take again the opportunity f for you to thank you for coming out to our community today. Look forward to working with you on this and a number of other initiatives that you've brought to the local governments. We're very much appreciative and if you have a moment we do, again we have our department heads here, our division heads who make the town tick. You know we have our acting fire, excuse me, acting police chief, our fire chief, our director of DPW, our director of development and special services, library director, highway director. It's a team and with the support of the state we can do great things. Thank okay, you. Great. Mm -hmm.